Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a This Year in Perfume. We are all the way to the year 2019, which is crazy. We're almost caught up to the present. Uh, and before we get started, a quick ramble. So today is actually a special day in the perfume calendar, if you will. Uh, Arige La Dore is releasing their individual bottles today. And uh, I did a live stream on the Arige La Dore Musks collection, as they call it. And um, my scent of the day yesterday was actually Quirtus. I've been wearing the uh, individual samples out. Uh, so I wore it as my scent of the day. Today, I'm wearing Royal Barn. So uh, these two are probably my favorite from the collection. If you go watch my live stream, if you want kind of first impressions, if you will, um, initial impressions on, on the collection, all five. Uh, I, I went through all of them on the live stream, but Quirtus and Royal Barn are my favorite. Royal Barn is... Um, based on a description that I had of, of uh, Queer de Russie by Chanel. And um, it is sort of probably one of the most um, traditionally musky smelling in the collection. All of these use sort of uh, Siberian deer musk and I think vintage musks as well, like Tonkin musk and stuff like that. Um, and so the musk profile on many of them is much softer than what you would expect. It doesn't have as much of the animalic push because there's some uh, rare vintage musks in here as well. This one in particular also uses a vintage um, Indian civet, if I'm not mistaken. I believe this is the one. Uh, let me, let's look at the notes real quick. Royal Barn, yes, vintage Indian civet. Uh, and, and so Royal Barn <clears throat> gives it uh, a little bit of like this, um, like if you've ever smelled civet de nuit, and you've smelled that vintage Civet and Civet de Nuit, this is almost like a more animalic version of Civet de Nuit. I absolutely love Royal Barn. It is fantastic, and thanks to a very kind member of the fragrance community, they're sending me a bottle of uh, my two favorites, so I'm a lucky ram. <clears throat> um, but that's my scent of the day. And also, the um, ramble on Arige La Dore must happen in, in 2019, because 17 is when Arige La Dore really started to make an appearance on these episodes. And it's my favorite brand of, of all time right now. Um, it's the only thing in the fragrance world I think that really gets me excited anymore. When new releases come out from Dolce & Gabbana or, you know, um, so, like a brand like Dior or something like that, I just don't get excited anymore. It doesn't matter to me. I don't really care. I feel like I'm smelling the same old, same old, same old over and over and over again. Um, you know, when Celine puts stuff out, it just doesn't matter. I don't care. But... On something like this, I do get excited. And and so you're gonna see that reflected in the ranking of um, of this collection, of this collection of perfumes. And for those of you who have just wandered in here and have no clue what's going on, uh, we're basically ranking fragrances in my collection that I either have a full bottle of or I've done individual reviews on, okay? So um, this is going to end up being a top 37, top 37 which is absolutely crazy uh, how big these lists have swelled as the years have gone on. So um, let's get started. But first, let's put ourselves back in sort of the um, mind, the mindset of, of 2019. So 2019 is kind of the year before it feels like the world just absolutely went crazy. When I look for history in 2019, it's funny because all I see are articles from the Council on Foreign Relations. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, but they were some of the things that they said were important in 2019. The North Korea-U.S. nuclear talks, uh, you might remember that Donald Trump was the very first president to set foot in North Korea. Uh, I remember that being big news in 2019. The uh, Brexit was a was huge news across the pond uh, in the United Kingdom. So, you know, it um, apparently is a very turbulent journey that got them there. But I think 2019 is the date where they couldn't persuade the House of Commons any further. Uh, and they basically just approved the deal. Uh, that she struck with the EU, and um, Brexit began. So it was, they, they delayed it, I think, until October 31st of the year, and then be Brexit basically began, and um, my uh, English friends over there are not happy with how it's all worked out. Some of them aren't, but um, uh, the U.S.-China trade war was going on in 2019. Probably remember that if you follow, if you pay attention to the news. Um and there were some big fires in the Amazon in, in, in 2019. Okay, so uh, let's talk about songs and movies from 2019. So I just literally did top, you know, top 10 songs released in 2019. And of course, they're going to be the usual suspects. Um, 
You've got stuff like uh, Lady Gaga, what's this, Shallow, uh, Happier by Marshmallow and Bastille, uh, Sunflower by Post Malone, Without Me by uh, Halsey, High Hopes, Panic at the Disco, uh, Wow by Post Malone. Those were some of the popular songs in 2019. It's funny, I remember walking into work one day and hearing Wow playing from the speakers at work. Uh, it was, it was kind of, I was like, wow, I can't believe, I was like, wow, they're playing wow. But, um, uh, anyways, if there's other songs from 2019 you want to shout out, put it in the comments. And some popular movies, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out in 2019. I actually like that movie. Uh, very rarely do I like a modern, um, Hollywood movie, especially one with the name Hollywood in it. Uh, Little Women, Us, Joker. Joker was fantastic. Uh, that might be one of my most favorite movies that... Um, that Hollywood has put out in the last decade. I really enjoyed Joker. Knives Out, The Lion King, uh, which was the re redo, because of course all they can do now are redos. The Lighthouse, uh, It Chapter 2. Ah, yes, It Chapter 2. That was a good one, too. So there were some decent movies in 2019. Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, Fa The Farewell, Booksmart, um, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Toy Story 4, The Souvenir, and Aladdin Remade, of course. Okay, so um, that gets us back in the mindset of 2019. So number 37. Well, first, actually, before we start doing the actual ranking, I want to give some uh, honorary mentions, some shout-outs. Um, if you've been following the channel, you know that there was a time where I actually bought a bottle of uh, Bortnikoff Sir Winston. We have to give it a rest-in-peace moment because it literally arrived without a head. Uh, the whole top of the bottle came off and juice was everywhere. The package smelled amazing, but um, the juice was just everywhere. So rest in peace, uh, Bortnikoff, Sir Winston. And and it was one of the older bottles, too. I was so I was so broken up, but uh, I'll find another one one day. Uh, Aaron Terrence Hughes, Tabak. Here's some shout outs, which I have not done reviews, but I have samples or, you know, something like that, which you will probably see on the channel later. Or I've done live streams on them, so... Uh, Amouage Love Mimosa. There's a Amouage sort of secret garden or whatever they call that collection live stream. Uh, Amouage Opus 12 Rose Incense. So we're going kind of in chronological order. We've got all the way through Opus 7. So 1 through 7 reviews are on the channel. Um, so we'll get through 8 and all the way to the end. Um, but Rose Incense by Amouage came out in 2019. I think that was officially one of the last Christopher Charms, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Portrayal Woman came out in 2019. Triumph of Bacchus by Argos, which is a brand that I actually really wanted to hate. I did not like the um, sort of marketing strategies of the brand, but the couple that I've smelled have not been bad. Um, they are very modern niche in style, but they haven't been they haven't been terrible, sh shockingly. Uh, Bortnikoff Zemfira, which I think I have a very small lucky scent sample. Sometimes I will prioritize um, sort of, you know, focusing on the uh, fragrances that I have larger amounts of, just because I get more wears out of them, it's easier to just grab and wear as my scent of the day and stuff like that. So if I have like a one mil lucky scent at atomized, you know, little sample thing, it'll get pushed to the back, but Zemfira is one of those I do have somewhere. Um, Celine's Eau de California and Saint Germain de Pre, Cent Centauri's Gaia, which I think means like Mother Earth. I've got some Centauri samples to discuss too. Ducita's La P Pavilion Door and Splend Iris. So I've got the Ducita sample set, so we can talk about those on the channel. Ensar's Iris Gallia is somewhere, and I have no clue where the hell it is, but I have it listed as I have a sample in Parfumo, so we have to find it. Uh, Francesca Bianchi's The Black Knight, that will probably be coming up very soon. Henley's Bloodline, which is fantastic, one of the best woody cedar fragrances I've ever smelled. Uh, House of Matriarchs Bonsai, Imaginary Authors Telegrama, January Scent Project Saren, there's a January Scent Project live stream if you want to check it out. Juicebox Sirens and Sailors, Kajal's Jory, Les and Demodabla's Rose de Jamal, one of the most beautiful roses ever made. Mask Milano Love Kills, I just did a rest in peace to the Mask Milano founder, unfortunately. You can see that in my videos within the last couple weeks. Uh, Motif Olfactif de Tuma Azuma and uh, Voile de Ensemble. And Pierre de Valet, which is Roja's like sister brand. <laughs> Very strange. Uh, but it's it's Pierre de Valet, number nine, and number 25, which uh, we'll talk about those on the channel one of these days. Rania J. Musk Moshis, uh, uh, Rogue Fougere Laub, Roja's Enigma Poron Parfum Cologne. I did a comparison video way, way back on the channel before I was up here in this office when I was downstairs um, of a 
Roja uh, comparison video between the Parfum Cologne and the Pure Parfum. So there's a comparison video on the channel of uh, Enigma, if you want to check that out, or Creation E, depending on where you live. Uh, Roja Hout Perfumery, which celebrates, I think, Roja's 15-year anniversary. I've got a sample. I think it's that yellow one right there, and I'll, I'll do a video on that one of these days. St. Dupont Perfect Tobacco, which is a Julian Rascone creation. His name's going to come up in the in the video as well. Um, I actually really like his work. Strange Loves Falling Into or Fall Into Stars. Excuse me, Fall Into Stars. Sultan Pasha's Jiraya, which I believe is named after either his daughter or his friend's daughter or something like that, but. I love Sultan Pasha's work. I, I need to get on the sample set. There's just so much to do in one ram. Uh, Unique Luxury Kute, which is one of the most disgusting um, sort of liqueur fragrances of all time. Zerjoff Alexandria the uh, Third and Starlight, and then Zoologist B Chameleon Dodo from 2019, which I hated. Dodo was one of my most hated. Uh, and Squid. Squid was one of my most favorite. So as far as like a very interesting take on like an inky aquatic. Sounds awful, but it's fantastic. I love squid. Squid would be a full bottle for me if money was no issue. Okay, before we do the top 37, though, we've got some surprise unboxings. So, um, this one actually comes all the way across the pond from our good friend Nick. So this is going to be a long video, so I hope you got your seatbelt on. So this comes all the way across the pond, and I don't think Nick minds uh, being given a shout out. I hope not, my friend. Um, so I'm just going to cut straight into this because screw it. Because that's how we roll here at Channel Ram. Okay. The box is being opened. Let's see what we get. Yeah, Royal Barn smells amazing. Oh, it, um, it's got a little bit of this sort of um, violet-like smell, which I don't know where that's coming from. It might actually be the vintage... Civet. Okay. 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 Let's see what we have here. Um, again, just kindness from the community. I can't tell you how grateful I am. I wouldn't get I wouldn't get to smell a lot of this stuff if it wasn't for you guys. So the first one we are going to talk about. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through these because I wanna I wanna pull them up as well and mark them on my Parfumo list. So we've got. Um, Rouge Assassin by the House of Javoy. Are you guys familiar with this one? I think Javoy is an amazing house. Um, so this is actually feminine targeted fragrance, but it's uh, got Ambrette, one of my favorite notes. Um, sometimes Ambrette can have a little bit of like a boozy, leathery, musk-like feel. It's a very expensive ingredient. So it's Ambrette, Elemi Rose, um, Bergamot, Rice Powder. So you can get that powdery floral thing. Benzoin, iris, tonka, cedar, musk. Very interested in checking these Javois out. And I have some Javoy, um sort of uh, samples. Or not samples, but full bottles, which I'll be talking about on the channel too. Okay, next on the list we have more Javois. A lot of Javois. Shout out to Nick, man. Javoy deserves to be discussed, so that makes me happy. So the next one is um, Remember Me which I think, off of memory, is a Cecile Zerokian creation, and I think it's also a feminine-targeted fragrance. 2018, yes it is. Um, sweet and spicy cardamom, frangipani, bergamot, tea, ginger, lemon, vanilla, milk, cedar, and woody notes. And it is a Cecile Zerokian, so my um, memory has not completely gone. Okay, next on the list we have uh, Ombre Premier. Ombre Premier. These are all Javois I've never smelled, so... That is awesome. Ombre Premier from 2011. It's a Michelle Saramito from Robertet. Candied orange, spicy notes, rose, amber, patchouli, musk, and vanilla. Awesome. That was on my wish list, so I can take it off the wish list and put it on the decant list. And then we have Fire at Will. So Fire at Will, uh, I think, is one of the newer ones. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Fire. No, your alphabet, Ramsey. F, there you are, I heard, well, 2021, yes, uh, it was released by Vanina Maracchioli, Maracchioli, God, sorry, my uh, American Texas slang will never get that right, vanilla, French mimosa, more vanilla, brown sugar, amber musk, and vetiver, wow, I have a feeling that's going to be like a gourmand sweet vanilla, but we shall see, and then, 
we have Pavilion Rouge. Pavilion Rouge. Um, which is 2018 release. Masculine release. Spices, whiskey, rum, sesame seeds, leather, tobacco, coffee, tea, ebony wood, benzoin, and vanilla. Mark Schneerer is the perfumer. That sounds amazing. I'm actually really interested in that one. Uh, and then we have La Liturgie de Urge. Something about the hours, I assume. In the liturgy. Uh, 2011 release from Jacques Flory of Robertet. I like his work, actually. Cypress, green notes, fresh notes, frankincense, myrrh, cystus, incense materials, patchouli, and musk. That sounds amazing. Sounds resinous. I love frankincense. So, all right, those sound great. Thank you, Nick. Um, okay, now we got a shitload of stuff. Uh, let's see. So the first one is Bogway's O-E. Um, Bogway's O-E. Are you guys familiar with that? Bogway, I've heard of it, but uh, I am not familiar with it. Bogway's O-E. 2015 release, and it is... Wow. Camphor... Bergamot, clove, cypress, grapefruit, neroli, resins, rosemary, thyme, vetiver, benzoin, black pepper, jasmine, juniper, Lebanon cedar, lemon, pine, sandalwood, tobacco, and rose. Hell of a note listing. And I'm coming around to Antonio Gardoni's work. I, um, for the longest time, I was a little put off. I will. I will admit. It took me a while to come along to his work, but uh, it's, it's getting there. So, Bogway's OE. And then we have... Golstan by Tower. Ah, this is the Tower that came out a couple years ago. Tower's Golstan, which is um, lemon zest, bergamot, elang, cinnamon, jasmine, tuberose, orange blossom, damask rose, cystus, labdanum, patchouli, ambergris, vanilla, and woods. Awesome. Uh, and then we've got Javoy's Just Interdit. Just Interdit. I'm not familiar with that. Um, let's see, just inter, there's just, this just proves, I mean, this is a great example of how much stuff there is out there. It's impossible. I mean, I think even if I had a team of people working, it would be impossible. Uh, you'd have to have like 10 people working to keep up. Uh, woody, resinous, floral notes, Italian bergamot, cypriol, hyracium, patchouli, that, that piques my interest. I like animalic notes. Benzoin, iris, oud, Virginia cedar, woods, and atlas cedar. That sounds very interesting. Amelie Bourgeois. Okay. Very interesting. Um, and then we've got P. Roma Santalum. 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 Ah, Perfumum Roma Santalum. Awesome. Woody, spicy, myrrh, sandalwood, absolute, and spices. I really, really rate the house of uh, Perfumum Roma, so I'm excited about that. And then, back to Javoy, we've got Musk Palace. Musk Palace. Musk Palace. Did I spell it right? Yes, I did. This is a 2023 release, so just last year. Powdery, floral, ambrette. I love ambrette and iris. Great combination. Peach, bergamot, spindrift. What is spindrift? Uh, I gotta look that up. Some sort of cloudy accord. Uh, musk and tonka bean. Vanina, maracchioli. Maracchioli. Maracciole. I have no clue how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. Uh, apologize. Not trying to make a joke out of your name, uh, Vanina. And then we have St. Clair by Clas Casablanca. Somebody yesterday just said, Ramsey, can you re re uh, review Casablanca by St. Clair Sense? And I said, sorry, I don't have it. Uh, and, and they left a comment reply saying, can someone please send Ramsey some? Well, your dreams have been answered literally the very next day. So that is St. Clair's Casablanca. Um, red mandarin, orange, black currant bud, pink grapefruit, tuberose jasmine, orange blossom, and elang with hyracium, civet, oak moss, labdanum, musk, and vetiver. That sounds right up my alley. Uh, Bogway's Dowler. Bogway's Dowler. D, what is this? D-O-U-E-U-R. Dowler. Bogway. Bogway's Dowler. 2019. Discontinued. Cotton candy, acetate, aldehydes, rosemary, spearmint, benzoin, caramel, damask rose, melon, cedarwood, civet, lavender, oak moss, sandalwood, vanilla, and kelp. 
Holy moly. Um, okay. Uh, La Art de Guerri. La Art de Guerri. Man, I really should take French courses if I'm going to sit up here and try to pretend to read these. Um, La Art de... I need a hot French teacher. La Art de, Gal de la Guerri. 2014 release. Um... Unisex, rhubarb, calabrian, bergamot, Granny Smith apples, Corsican immortelle. Very specific. Napoleon would approve. Violet leaf, lavender, nutmeg, oak moss, Australian sandalwood. Uh, Corsican cystus, Indonesian patchouli, and leather. Also, our good friend Vanina is back. So she is a Javoy maker. And then we have Sombre Desines. Sombre Desines. Um, they need to make their names easier. Sombre Remember me, I could do, but Sombre Desines, Des, Desines, there we go, 2015. Um, pink pepper, Italian bergamot, osmanthus, patchouli, rose, saffron, frankincense, labdanum, rum, and Indian sandalwood. Amelia Bourgeois is back. So we get lots of repeat perfumers with uh, Javoy. And we've got La, La Ar 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 Arbery de la Connaissance. Now they're just fucking with me. I can't pronounce that shit. Uh, la Arbore, La Arbore de la Conia. Oh, it didn't like it. There it is. T 2011. Um, grapefruit, sorry, citrus fruits, green notes, fig, patchouli, sandalwood, and fig tree. Oh, this is a fig. This is fig and fig. Marc Antoine de. And Don of Robertet. Robertet makes has good good fragrances though, so I'm excited. I'm excited to um, to get to know that. And I don't have an out and out fig fragrance in my collection. So uh, okay. And then we have Pegwell Bay. I know about this. I know about Pegwell Bay uh, because uh, Pegwell Bay is a fragrance that is made by the house Hakels, which I think. Um, Dom Bridges is the perfumer, and actually they changed the name to like the coordinates, so tw uh, 2130 East Pegwell Bay, and the coordinates 51 degree, I can't, I'm not going to read that, uh, the shallow Pegwell Bay between Ramsgate and Sandwich in Kent, South England, it's a natural reserve, which can be accessed by the public. Interesting. Uh, I know it's supposed to be very cologne Citrusy, curly mint, fennel, juniper, celery. The uh, Waff from the Lofts guy really raved that one. And then we've got Hubegant's Bois Mystique. Uh, and Hubegant is a house that I actually really rate as well. Bois Mystique. 2018. Um, cardamom, ginger, pink pepper, bergamot, divana, neroli, frankincense, black pepper, cypriol, cinnamon, iris, cedarwood, amber, guyacwood, musk, and myrrh. Luca Mafai, ah, he's caught, he's caught fire since 2018. Many people are interested in Luca Mafai's services, so that's good stuff. And finally, Golden Sheepra by Grossmith. I really, really rate the brand of Grossmith. So, um, Grossmith Golden Sheepra, 2012, awesome. One of the originals, spicy sheepra, bergamot, cardamom, sorry. Yeah, bergamot, cardamom, nutmeg, orange, geranium, patchouli, rose, vetiver, heliotrope, amber, labdanum, musk, and wood. So um, there is an unboxing from our good friend, Nick. Thank you, my friend. You are way, way too kind. Believe it or not, I have more unboxings. I'm going to save them. I don't, want the whole, uh, I don't want the whole thing to be unboxings. So let's get on with 2019, why the majority of you people are here. Have you waited 25 minutes for me to begin talking about 2019? Uh, if so, bravo. So um, first of all, number 37, last on the list, is a fragrance by the house of Halloween. And it's called Halloween Man X. Don't ask me why I have stuff like this. I literally have no desire to ever wear it. Um, it's way too sweet for me. Nicholas Bailu is the uh, perfumer. Cardamom, lemon, provincial lavender, coffee, mineral notes, cinnamon, leather, whiskey, tonka bean, amber, and frankincense. Let me get some blotters so we can spray. Uno momento. Let us spray. All right, now I got to mark this though. Halloween. 
So, um, this is a, um, this is a fragrance that is going to be good for like, I think a high school student, you know, something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just way, 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 way too sweet for me. Right off the bat, you just get this sweet, generic Tonka amber thing that you get in many designers nowadays. It reminds me a little bit of Salvatore Ferragamo's Womo, um, but this has coffee instead of, what is Salvatore Ferragamo's? It has like um, tiramisu is what it is. It has tiramisu. So this one has coffee and whiskey and leather. And literally when I'm smelling it, I can just, I can just smell Royal Barn right here. I need to hold it in this hand. You know, it's just so synthetic, so designer, so boring. I think this would go great for a high school kid, honestly. It's, um, the girls would like it because it's sweet off of him. This is just not for people like us, in my opinion. So last on the list, maybe I'll review it as a joke one day and, you know, we can uh, all laugh and have a good hearty har-har. Number 37. Number 36 is a Nishan A, and it is Ani. Now, I really rate the brand of Nishan A, actually. Um, and you'll, there's actually a higher Nishan A, higher up in the list. Um, but this one I kind of turned on and, and the reason I turned on it is because of the sort of custard like vanilla note in here. And you know, the thing about it is I do like vanilla, but the thing about the vanilla is that I really rate, I really just like wearing my vintage gear lawns when I'm in the mood for vanilla, I would just wear something like, um, Shalimar for example. And anytime there is a vanilla that holds itself in high regard in Fragcom, uh, I, it always gets compared to Shalimar for me. And so I just have a problem. Um, I just have a problem. And there's also this very strange sh sort of... Um, so it opens up with a note of what they call blue ginger. Now, I don't know anything about blue ginger, but I can tell you that uh, the whole ginger, spicy... Yeah, it's like a... It opens up like a ginger lemon meringue pie. Okay, so just imagine like a gingery take on a lemon meringue pie. Very creamy, very whipped creamy. The vanilla literally uh, smells like it's whipped, okay? And this, you know, to me, I don't just, I don't feel like this is deserved of, of an Ani, of a uh, Nishane, excuse me. Maybe it is deserved of an Ani, I don't know. But um, is it terrible? No. But when you've been around the block for a while and you have worn what I would consider to be the best vanilla fragrances ever, it's hard to wear this. Every time I wear it now, I'm like, why the hell didn't I just wear Shalimar? Why? What am I doing to myself? So maybe I'll review it and um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But number 36 is um, Nishane's Ani. And they come with these sort of cards, if you guys want to see, if you're at all interested in the uh, postcard that Nishane thinks represents Ani. So there we have it. There is the visual representation of Ani uh, in a postcard form. Blue ginger. Has anyone else heard of blue ginger? Um, I can tell you I've never seen it in the wild, although I am not a ginger connoisseur, but I am a little bit of a sushi connoisseur, and I do like a lot of ginger with my sushi. It's supposed to be like a palate cleanser. Um, and But I've never seen blue ginger. So, I cannot work this packaging this morning, man. Doing videos in the morning on a Saturday morning after a long night may not be the best idea. Okay, so number 36, Ani. Number 35, we have our aforementioned... Actually, uh, number 35 is a fragrance that I don't have the uh, sample of anymore. It's from a house called Floracal. And Floracal makes the um, bottles that... Uh, have like Japanese artwork and stuff all over them. I, I, I think it's all um, maybe designed after the East. Um, and I think it's owned by the same house that makes Memo. So I think Memo Paris also owns Floracal. If that gives you any idea of the quality, I own zero from the brand. But I did review one very, very early on. It was more of an early impression off of a sample that somebody sent me. Um, and it's called AO. I don't know how you pronounce that. I don't know if it's Ao or AO or, or what. But uh, apparently, A-O in Japanese literally means blue-green, all right? And that's kind of how the fragrance smells from memory. Blue, green, um, with a touch of this sort of warm fig. 
so it's like a warm cooked fig from memory and uh, very very fruity i like the fig note but um the prices on these are crazy by the way they try and make them like super exclusive and everything and I, I just don't buy it i also don't buy it with the house of memo i have zero memos i have zero floor cow so that that gives you an idea of what i think of the brand okay next on the list number 34 is a celine and it is black tie okay now um i have a review of a couple celines on the channel one is the daytime uh scent that's supposed to go with black tie which I, I believe is called Bois Dormant, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and and I, I, I think it's Bois, Bois Dormant from memory. And I think I have a review of both Bois Dormant, which is supposed to be the daytime scent, and Black Tie, which is supposed to be the nighttime scent. I have no clue how these two are supposed to go together. They make no sense to me. Why one is day, one is night. It doesn't make sense. Um, but Black Tie, uh, people rave about it online. They rave about it. And I'm just like, what in the world? Is, what is the... Um, association what is the connection what why do you like it so much i don't understand because to me it just smelled like the most realistic sort of um cooking vanilla i've ever smelled in my life and i understand that um um heidi slamane wants to kind of remake that uh dior ohm dna over and over and over again i remember in my review i said something like um he 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 was he he uh was quoted as saying i like to remake the um blazer jacket or something i forget what type of jacket it was but it was a specific type of jacket he's like i like to remake that over and over and over again in my head i'm thinking you also like to remake to your own over and over and over again but this is just sweet powdery soft cooking vanilla and i hated the first hour hated it um it gets better i think in the dry down but nowhere near worth the prices celine is asking celine to me is not a brand for for me i don't think um okay next on the list we have number 33 and it is my only blue fragrance. Well, my only proper blue fragrance. You could argue maybe a different one is blue here or there, but this is an out-and-out -out blue fragrance, and it's Sauvage Parfum. Now, um, I picked Sauvage Parfum because I thought it was the most grown-up of the blue fragrances, and um, I must admit that the uh, sort of Salinese sandalwood that they use here in, in the base is very nice, okay? Uh, it is just so synthetic with that ambroxan, even though it's not uh, as, I would say, uh, you know, the original Sauvage, I think, is obnoxious. That's a good word for it. The EDT of Sauvage is obnoxious. It just, everyone within a five-mile radius will smell you. You'll gas out the whole auditorium. Um, but Sauvage Parfum is a little bit more professional. It is... Um, it uses things like mandarin orange, calabrian bergamot, Sichuan pepper, lavender, nutmeg. But instantly you're just hit with this blue ambroxan thing, which I just always shrug. I'm just like, eh, it doesn't do it for me. It just doesn't. I mean, even the high-end ones like Roja's Elysium and stuff like that, I'm just like, eh. I never even reviewed Elysium yet. I have a decant. Maybe I'll review it in the... Um, in the uh, summer when it gets hot. That's when I would, if I was ever going to wear this as a scent of the day, that's probably when I would do it in the summer. But the problem, the other problem is I don't like smelling like everybody else. I just don't. And everywhere I go, I still smell this DNA. And I'm just like, eh, wretch. Um, at least this one's a little bit more classy, but it has that same DNA. You know, and that's the problem. So yes, it sits a little more close to the skin. Um... Maybe you get a little bit more lavender, a little more Virginia cedar, a little touch of the Sichuan pepper and nutmeg. Maybe it's a little spicier, but overall it's the same DNA, and I don't want to smell like everybody else, so I have a problem with that one. Uh, number 33, Sauvage Parfum. Number 32. Uh, number 32 is a Gucci, and it is not the Gucci you're expecting. Well, I did review a Gucci from this line. It is from the Gucci Guilty line. It is not Gucci Guilty Absolute which is one of the best designers of the last decade. This is Gucci Guilty Cologne. And I must say, for a Gucci, um, and I believe it's an Alberto Morias, all right? Uh, Gucci Guilty Cologne. Gucci Guilty Cologne is not bad. Um, would I tell you to go out and run and pay big money for it? No. 
Uh, but for what it is, I don't think it's bad because the reason I don't think it's bad is because Alberto Mordias used a lot of aromatic notes in here. So yes, it's fresh. Yes, it's a cologne. Yes, it's got woody elements, but I really like the overdose of sort of rosemary, which gives it like this oily, aromatic feeling. Uh, my dad's signature scent for the longest time, still today, uh, for my whole life basically, was um, Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme is like one of the most beautiful rosemary executions I've ever smelled. And it always harkens to this masculine side of the, of the you know, gender spectrum. Rosemary always leans masculine. And here it's rosemary, but with with white musks and uh, violet and Spanish cypress. So it's a little bit green. It's a little bit aromatic. It's fresh. It's woody. And it's discontinued. So don't go pay big money for this. But if you can find it for, I don't know what I paid for that. I didn't pay a lot. Um, if you can find it for a fair price, go for it. So that is Gucci Guilty Cologne Pour Homme uh, at number 33. Uh, sorry, 32. 31 is a Moschino, and it is probably the most popular Moschino, Toy Boy. Now, I think Toy Boy is a good designer fragrance. Um, I understand the bottle, the hate for the bottle, you know, like the bear's gonna come haunt you in the night. Ooh, but um, it's a, I think it's a good fragrance. Um, I think Toy Boy is a fragrance that um, took some guts to put out in, in the designer space. It's, um, Floral, spicy, and it's a good execution of rose. Uh, so it's got things like pear in the top. It's a little bit fruity. Sprayer is really good. It's a little bit fruity. So you get pear and clove, spices, pink pepper, elemi. The elemi adds that soft, incensey feeling. And instantly you get this rose. And it's just there. I mean, it's just... It's like a, a spicy rose surrounded by the softness of cashmeran, the spices I just mentioned, um, magnolia, which I think can also have this soft, fruity, floral aspect, flax blossom, which um, I know flax seed, but flax blossom, I can't say I'm very familiar with. Um, flax blossom with uh, amber max uh, in the base, silo collide. Silo Collide is a fragrance ingredient by Jibodon and um, Haitian Vetiver. Uh, I, I don't remember what that Silo Collide is. It might be an Ambroxan derivative thing. I don't, I don't remember. But um, for a designer, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'll review Toy Boy one of these days, although there's almost no interest in this anymore. I think if you can pick this up for a good price, it's, it's worth it, um, especially if you like Rose. If you like rose, and there's another, there's a rose I mentioned earlier from 2019 that I think is even better, but it didn't make the uh, countdown because I haven't reviewed it on the channel yet. That is um, um, Lesson Demo Dabla's Rose de Jamal. I'll review that soon. Okay, next on the list we have number uh, 30. And number 30 is a Dior. And it's a Dior that I've reviewed on the channel uh, to much uh, dismay. I was not impressed with this at all. You know, these private blend Dior's should be much higher than 30 on a countdown list. You know, it shouldn't be beat out by a designer, which is coming next, and it, and it absolutely is. Uh, so this one's called Spice Blend. So Spice Blend, uh, I remember being extremely distraught with how just generic it is. Uh, I did not like the whole boring, sweet, spicy base. You know, it just smelled like you know what it, it smelled like? Um, it smelled like they were trying to capitalize on the spice bomb trend. Okay, so spice bomb, spice blend. You know, eh, maybe someone who doesn't know their fragrances uh, may get the two confused, and uh, they wouldn't get the price confused though, because the Dior private blends are are very expensive. But um, it did have a note of bay rum. Okay, so it was like bay rum with um, pepper notes, ginger, cinnamon, and rum absolute, okay? So bay rum and rum absolute, and it had this sweet, spicy, oriental undertone that just reminded of the Spice Bomb DNA. I already own uh, 1899 by Histoise de Parfum, 
And so I remember just being very uh, disappointed in that. It's 2019. That was when I feel like, that was when I feel like, um, you know, our good friend Francois Demachy kind of started mailing it in. You know what I mean? Like he just uh, was creating for the purpose of creating. He knew he was going to retire. And yeah, 2019 and on for him, his work was very bland. <sighs> Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Okay, next on the list, we have um, number 29, and this is the aforementioned um, designer that beat out Spice Blend. Uh, this is called Cartier's Pasha uh, Parfum. So this is the Parfum version of Pasha de Cartier, all right? And um, this is a, a fragrance in a long line of, of flankers. Uh, in the designer world that have tried to take a vintage fragrance like uh, Pasha de Cartier and they have tried to sort of um, make it uh, modern by using booze notes. Okay, so boozy notes are what kind of modernizes Pasha de Cartier Parfum. It is sweet, but you know what? I like the way Mathieu Laurent used the sweetness here better than Francois Demachy used it even in the private blend. So it's a spicy, sweet fragrance, which you could almost categorize spice blend as the exact same thing, spicy and sweet. But um, there is this very interesting boozy note and a very well done sandalwood, ambery patchouli underneath. It's a little bit old fashioned. It has one foot in the past. You know, you can smell what almost smells like um, the green notes of a forest underneath. Right? So you can almost get a hint of what might be cypress or something green or something like that. But on the top, you have that um, modernized booziness, right? And so it makes it very, um, uh, very modern, you know, classy, but modern. And I like that about it. So I'm a fan. I got this tester for very, very cheap. I got a great price on this tester, hence no cap. But, um, but yes, you can see right there the tester. Demonstration. Uh, but yes, don't be afraid to buy testers, especially if you're in it for the juice, right? Because if you're not in it for the, um, taking pictures and posting your stuff and flexing and all that, just get, get the cheap, get the, get the tester. It's the same thing. Um, okay. That was 29. 28 is a fragrance that for me kind of ruined my only by Killian bottle. I own a bottle of by Killian straight to heaven extreme, which is discontinued and goes for insane money online. Um, but, um, this one's called Jeroboam Ligno. And you know what? This goes for, I got this for under a hundred bucks. All right. This, uh, Jeroboam house, I forget who owns them. Um, ah, I forget who owns them, but our good friend, Fanina Maraccioli is back and, um, she's made Ligno, uh, and, or he, I'm sorry. I don't, I, I'm assuming Vanina is a she, but, um, this is a spicy resinous take that really reminds me of by Killian Straight to Heaven Extreme um, with that sort of patchouli uh, a patchouli combination. It, it doesn't have a boozy note listed, okay? So Straight to Heaven Extreme is known for its combination of patchouli and um, I believe rum. Yes, patchouli and rum. So it's patchouli rum with woods and vanilla, okay? So ligno is patchouli and um, labdanums, labdanum with uh, saffron in the top. And saffron can kind of give, sometimes saffron gives off this chemical feel. Sometimes it gives off a sort of heft to the fragrance, like a weight, you know? Like, um, just like, a sand dune is made up of all of the tiny pieces of sand, but when you add it all up, it's a, it's a big dune. You can walk on top of it, right? That's kind of how saffron feels in some fragrances, and that's how it feels here. Uh, all of these are extras, so they're very heavy. Um, and this is like, uh, yeah, I mean, so I don't know what it is, but there's something about the opening that gives me a boozy feel. I don't know what it is. I have no, maybe it is the saffron. Maybe it's like a chemical booziness, earthy and boozy. And instantly already, what, 30 seconds in? Um, a minute in? You're getting that patchouli uh, combination that will remind you of Straight to Heaven Extreme. 
So if you're a fan of that type of perfumery, if you're a fan of big patchouli, scratchy, patchouli, heavy patchouli, spicy, resinous fragrances, this is one to check out. I, I would like to smell more from the brand, I'll tell you that. Uh, and I'll be reviewing that one of these days, which I say a lot. Okay, um, let me get some of those blotters out of the way. Okay, next on the list we have number uh, 27. And it is our good friend, Francesca Bianchi, the only fragrance from her that I own. And you know what? It's not even one of my favorites. That's a crazy thing. Uh, I blind bought it at the um, uh, beckoning of Papa Persole's. And the reason I bought it is because he said that this reminds him of one of his favorite fragrances of all time, which is Azure by Estee Lauder. I will review this. This is one of the finest fragrances money can buy, period, ever, and, and st full stop. Uh, Azure is out of this world good. And I said, Azure in a Francesca Bianchi? No way. And I blind bought it. And I was like, this is an Azure. Uh, taking the piss, Papa P. But um, uh, it is okay. It's not bad. It um, Etruscan water is an okay fragrance. It's not one of my favorites from her. Uh, but I don't hate it. You know, it's a uh, very sort of wearable Shepra construction, if you will. Um, and it definitely has her... What some have called lazy, some have called her D signature DNA, sort of um, orris root that just kind of papers everything over. Her orris accord feels like it kind of papers everything over, like it, like it fills in all of the gaps, right? So it's very um, sort of spicy green, but instantly you're going to get her orris root, orris concrete, whatever the hell you want to call it, DNA. And here it's mixed with basil and immortel. Immortel kind of gives this coarse, sort of um, dry feeling to a fragrance. And so it's like, um, you know, very Mediterranean in style, very... There are lots of citruses in here. There's bergamot, grapefruit, petit gran, which is, I think, the sticks and twigs of the neroli, of um, the orange blossom tree. Um... And it's, it's okay, it's just I like her, uh, for example, I like Lover's Tail better, I like Under My Skin better. Um, there were a lot of Francesca Bianchi's that I just liked better than Etruscan Water, but I'll review it one of these days. And technically, the fragrance is called Free Fall Etruscan Water. Free Fall, but no one says the Free Fall part, it's just Etruscan Water. Uh, okay, so next on the list, we have number 20. Six, and we are back to a Nishane. There's actually more Nishanes on the list, but uh, number 26 is the second Nishane on the list, and this is Unutumam. Now, Unutumam is much more my speed than Ani. Ani is like boring to me with that whipped lemon meringue vanilla thing. Anutumam is insane. Uh, it is an insane perfume. The problem is, I almost think it's too insane, which you thought I would never say, but um, Unutumam... Um, I don't really know how to describe it yet, so I, I will hopefully get around to doing a review one of these days, but Onutumam, I mean, you can see it almost stained the damn thing. Uh, it is, yeah, I mean, instantly it's like this very strange animalic caramel. Imagine like an animalic caramel note um, that also opens up minty and... Um, so it's got mint and oregano, right? So animalic caramel, mint, oregano, and that animalic bit as it dries continually turns more like um, balsamic and smoky and leathery. So it's animalic, it's spicy, there's rosemary. Again, I mentioned rosemary earlier. It gives this weird oily kind of concoction to it, aromatic oiliness. There is lavender. So there are proper pieces in here, like there's proper pieces of a, um, of, of like a, of a traditional fragrance, but the insanity of it is what really piques my interest. I like weird fragrances like this, but there is something about that almost like smoked caramel leatheriness that is just weird. It's just, it's just very weird. It's almost like, it's almost like, um, even someone like Serge Luton would be like, Dude, you're way off base here. Um, what are you doing? Uh, and you know, if Serge says that, it's some crazy shit. So that's the way I feel. 
I feel like even Serge Luton would be like, uh, we ain't releasing this. So if you like weird, crazy stuff, I told you about the House of Beaufort, right? Beaufort, a London, does some experimental, crazy stuff. Interestingly enough, this is part of the experimental collection. Good name, because it really does feel like they're just kind of taking the piss with some of this. But believe it or not, I like it. Uh, so, Onutumam by Nishan A from 2019. Miguel Matos is the perfumer. Um, so that is... Number 26. Number 25 is a Tiziana Terenzi. I've got a full review on the channel. This is called Arrakis. So I actually liked Tiziana Terenzi's fragrances, even though they are huge. Um, they're giant. I'm not going to spray this because I won't be able to smell anything else. But if you're a fan of beast mode, like if that's your thing, if you're if the first words out of your mouth are, yeah, I get it, bro, but what's the projection and longevity? This is the brand for you. I mean, this stuff lasts forever. Um... It is very spicy, sweet. It definitely gives that, you know, Parfums de Marly, Herod DNA kind of thing. But I think this does it better than Parfums de Marly does that style personally. Um, there's a Cambodian Oud note in here. Ambergris, Musk, Brazilian Tonka bean. So I think Paolo Terenzi uh, is uh, one step higher than what Parfum de Marly is doing. But... Um, but yeah, there was just something about the gloopy, syrupy... You know, it's got Japanese osmanthus, which kind of gives it this, um, you know, leathery, suede, nectarine, peach-like feel. Um, and there's just something about the sort of heft of his fragrances. Like, this smells like a Spirit of Dubai fragrance to me. Like, if you would have just put this under my nose, I probably would have said this is like the new Spirit of Dubai. I mean, it is just gigantic, huge. Um, so if you like brands like, you know... Parfum de Marly or Mansara or something like that, but you want to see that style done better, I think uh, Tiziana Terenzi does that style better. Do I own any? I own one, and I got it for a very... Actually, that's not true. I got it for free. Someone sent it to me for free um, because they watched one of my Tiziana Terenzi reviews, and they were like, hey, you really like this. It was Ladano Nero. You can have my bottle. I never wear it. And I went, cool. Um, so, so, yes. Uh, but have I ever purchased one? No. Will I ever? Probably not, but um, I don't hate the brand, believe it or not. So, Tiziana Terenzi, uh, 25, Arrakis. You can go check out my review. Number 24, I can't find the sample. It's somewhere still. I just don't know where. It's Marc Antoine Balwa, Ganymede. So, the original Ganymede. Th this, you know, that may be what I should have said to, to perfume lovers instead of going through, you know, news stories, songs, movies. I should have just said 2019 was the year of Ganymede. That would have taken everyone back to 2019. Um, it was everywhere. That spicy, woody Akigala wood with uh, Immortel and Chinese Osmanthus Absolute or Purr and Violet uh, and Saffron. Ganymede, I reviewed Ganymede on the channel. I remember talking about how it smells like taking the tab off of like one of those Coke cans or, or Sprite cans and putting it on your tongue. And you ever put like a penny on your tongue or something and you get that weird kind of um sort of scientific experiment like uh metallic feel in your in your mouth and you're like Ugh! like putting a battery on your tongue that's kind of what Ganymede reminded me of very strange but took off like a rocket I mean put the house of Marc Antoine Bawa on the map and made Queen Tom Biche a huge name uh you know back in 2019 um can you believe that's five years ago? Fuck me. Uh, okay. So anyways, so Antoine, Mark Antoine Bawa, Gany Mead at 24. 23 is a Mayo Fushioni. And I like this house. They're very interesting. Uh, they're very, uh, there's something about the house that I just connect with. Uh, and this is number 23. This one's called Spirito. And the way I describe Spirito in my review is it really reminded me of sitting in my grandmother's lawn when I was a little kid. And looking up and seeing these huge trees up in upstate New York, you know. In Texas, we have small trees because the water content and the climate just, you know, they're just, they can, they're much smaller. Um, we don't have big trees here in Texas where I live like you would in upstate New York, right? And I just remember looking and just being in awe. And um, there's something very natural about this. Foresty um, Spiritu uh, also has a um, very herbaceous feel, like outdoor 
there's uh, cypress, hyssop, myrtle, and there's this paper and carrot and angelica accord. So you get the idea with woods and elemi. So there's a little a little hint of that um, of that um, sort of wispy incense. And the the cover is actually trees. Uh, it literally is looking up at trees. But maybe the picture reminded me of sitting in my grandmother's uh, front lawn looking up at these giant trees. And you know the other thing is that I said, if you um, have ever seen R.E.M.'s album cover green, if you've never seen the green album cover, just go look it up, uh, it, it, you know, and, and you'll it'll look like you're looking up at trees. But if you just take a second, just one second, and really pay attention, you'll notice you're not looking up at trees. You're looking down at the water because there's like a ripple in the water, and it's the reflection of the trees. And that is the depth of Spiritu for me. It just has this... There is just something so... I don't know. It just connects with me. There is a connection to Mayo Fushioni's fragrances. And I actually have Little Song, which I'll be reviewing soon. I really like Little Song, too. So I need to smell more from the house. Definitely need to try more Mayo Fushioni's. They're not cheap, but they're not super expensive either. Um, so, so yes, very aromatic, well done, uh, herbaceous fragrance. Okay, so that is Spiritu. And none of them use, like, harsh... They're like the complete opposite of Tiziana Terenzi. Like, they're not using the ingredients that'll make it last on your skin for 84 hours. They're not doing that. Um, you know, so they're not going to be beast mode or anything like that. The beast mode bros will not like Mayo Fushioni. But if you're, you know, if you are uh, into classy fragrances, that's a house to definitely check out. Okay, so as I just sounded like I shit all over fragrances that have ingredients that make it last forever. Now I'm going to talk about one I love, and this is called Queer Entendance by the House of Guerlain. I love leather. I'm a leather head. Uh, I always have loved leather, and um, this is a Middle Eastern style leather fragrance. Uh, Queer Entendance is, it does exactly what the name on the tin says. It is an intense queer and intense leather um oh man and you know what it's leather and osmanthus okay and there's almost like this oud i would guess there was oud, like an oud accord in here right because of like the spicy sometimes oud can turn leathery and spicy and when you mix this you know osmanthus just has this almost like balloon like uh rubbery um sort of apricot, it's almost like you papered over a balloon with suede, right? Like you made a holder for your balloon in suede. And it's leathery, it's musky, it's got tobacco and Virginia cedar and sandalwood underneath, and I think some sort of a oud accord. I love this stuff. Uh, some people say, ah, oh, it smells like a latafa, or it smells like a, um, you know, rasasi, or it's got this middle, it does have a Middle Eastern tint, it's in the Middle Eastern collection, but... It's damn good. Um, I, I really, really rate this stuff. I love it. I'll, um, I'll, I'll wear, I'll wear it and uh, and uh, do a review one of these days. It deserves its uh, its own review. So, Queer on Taunts by Guerlain at number twenty. What did I say? Twenty two. Twenty two. Yes, twenty one is Erosia. I don't have the. Um, I don't think I have it, anyways. Um, no, maybe I do. Let's see. Maybe I do. Uh, so, 21 is Roja's. Let's see if it is actually in here. Uh, Roja's. Are you in here? You are! Roja's Oceania. How's that for on the fly? Uh, Roja's Oceania. And you know what? I really like this. I'm not an aquatic fan. Uh, I feel like I already have all the aquatics that I need. I have um, Ocean Rain. I have Aralfa. Like, that's enough aquatics for me right there. Just those two I mentioned. Um, and But Oceania does it very different. You know, there's a little bit of like this um, Petrichor Accord. But I love the greenness. And I love the way the Litsea Kubiba, which is a shrub... Uh, that grows in the east, mostly China, I believe. But it's supposed to, it's a tropical plant that um, 
sort of uh, has a main ingredient of citral, which can sometimes smell like lemongrass, but it's supposed to uh, extend the life of the citruses into the dry down deeper. Like it tricks your nose into thinking you're smelling lemons and grapefruits and limes and oranges and bergamots and all this stuff deeper into the dry down, right? It, it recreates it. It's an imposter, but it works. And Roja loves using it in some of his citrusy creations. And he uses it here to much uh, success, in my opinion, with oak moss, juniper, vetiver, iris, vanilla, all in a beautiful floral heart, rosemary and thyme. And there's something very green, you know, about it. Um, even though it's listed as an aquatic and there's like ocean waves on the front, something very floral and green. And I really like Oceania. Like uh, if I was going to add another aquatic, that could definitely be high on the list. I just, there's just no need for me at, at this point in my, in my journey, if you will, there's just no need. So yes, Oceania comes in at number 21. Number 20 is another Roja, which I don't know where the decant is. Um, and, and it's called Roja's Herod's Porom. I've reviewed it on the channel. You can check it out. Uh, it is extremely expensive. It's a spicy citrusy. I've often said that these sort of like, um, uh, de uh, like uh, department store fragrances, he plays it very safe with. And this is very traditionally safe. There is a little bit of a hint of Oceania in here, but this is like more traditional. Uh, for some reason, it reminds me of more of a proper green, maybe take on a fougere, you know, something like that. Uh, lots of lavender, um, oak moss, vetivers, you know, very, there is that same, let's say, a kubiba in here. There's, and there's the same five or very close to five citruses as Oceania. Bergamot, lime, lemon, orange. Uh, I think instead of mandarin orange, like bitter orange in this one. Uh, there's a big floral heart as well. I think uh, Herod's Porom has Neroli and Oceania doesn't. Um, you know, it's it's six in one hand, half dozen in the other with these two, basically. But um, I uh, I put Herod's Porom a little bit ahead of Oceania. I just think it's a little bit more like if I was going to go to an office every day and I was like an executive or something, you could easily wear Herod's Pour Homme every day and just smell like a like a boss, you know? It's classy, it's traditional, it's beautiful, it's nice. Go check out my review if you want to learn more about it. Um, but uh, very, very well done. Ocean, or sorry, Herod's Pour Homme at number 20. Number 19. Uh, number 19 is a Nishane again, the highest rated Nishane on this list, and it's called Neffs. Now, <coughs> excuse me, Neffs, um, I've got a full review on the channel. You can check it out. It's off of a sample, which I could not find, but uh, it was done by Christian Carbonell, and I really, really enjoyed the way that um, sort of the, you know, and, and what I said in my review before I get into it is that if you're somebody who uh, has smelled a lot of uh, Middle Eastern style fragrances, okay, so if you're someone who smelled the spirit of Dubai's and stuff like that, you may spray this and go, oh God, not another one of these, but but I really liked the way Neffs was executed. Like, I liked the little touches. It had this honey, like, overall. Uh, it had whiskey. It had leather. Uh, it had saffron, of course, for the Middle Eastern style. It had that rose osmanthus combo, which I actually really like osmanthus. Really, really like osmanthus. Uh, and it had this interesting little fig. You know, it had little details like you would expect in, like, a Roja Middle Eastern line blend. Um, and I like the oud and leather accord in here and all that stuff. So... Is it worth the price Nishani is selling it for? Because it's in the Prestige collection? No. Uh, but did I enjoy it and like it? Yes, absolutely. I would not mind owning a bottle of Nefs, but I would never pay for it. That's the thing. I'd never, I'd never give Nishane that kind of money. Um, so Nefs at number 19. Number 18 is a Bulgari, and it is called Falkar. Now, Falkar is the only Le Gem collection Le Gem, that I own. Um... In, and it is a Jacques Cavalier, okay, uh, creation. And um, so the bottles basically look like this. There's a stupid little book that comes with the Bulgari Le Gym collection. This is LVMH doing what LVMH does, which is sell perfume that probably isn't worth the $300, $400, $500. I don't even know what these go for anymore, but you can you get the idea. If you like... Jacques Cavalier's work at Louis Vuitton. So if you like Ombre Nomad, if you like um, Nuit de Fa, you know, if you like those kind of fragrances, uh, Falcar is 
right, probably going to be right up your alley. It's basically a woody, leathery, it's an oud leather saffron with black musk is what they say. Um, and I like it. I mean, I enjoy wearing it. Is it going to compete with the Ariz Ladores at the top of the list? Hell no. Is it going to compete with Royal Barn? Which is fucking unbelievable. No. Uh, but is it good? Yes, I like this style of perfumery. For what it is, for what it is, I like it. I'm a fan. Um, I am a fan. I must admit, I'm a fan. So that's Falcar at uh, number uh, 18. Number 17 is a Eris Parfums. That's another house I really want to dive more into. And, and this is MXXX, which I have a uh, full review on the channel. You can check it out. A spicy, animalic. You know, they, everyone kind of uh, amped up how animalic MXXX is. I didn't get this huge animalic aspect. It reminded me a little bit of how the animalic aspect was done in some of the ambergris heavy Lesson de Modablas. Uh, and, and it makes perfect sense because number one, it's an Antoine Lee. And um, number two, they're using the same, uh, whatever that, oh, I, can I can never remember the name. But uh, they're using the same oil house as Les Abstraits, Eugene's house, uh, Eris uses it, and Les Indemodables uses it. So, um, you know, if you're if you're into those three brands, definitely check out MXXX and go watch my full review if you're interested in learning more. So that's number 17, MXXX. Number 16 is a tower fragrance, which I unfortunately also could not find the decant. It's somewhere, but uh, I just reviewed it within the last couple months. It's called Le Air de Alpes Suisses. Air over the Swiss Alps, basically. Probably one of the best fresh fragrances I've ever come across recently. Uh, fresh fragrances are not my thing. I mentioned it when I did the review. Many frag heads, when they see things like an air accord, and they're just like, oh no, not a freshy. But this one, there's something about it that just absolutely captured my attention. I really think Andy Tower is an exceptional, maybe one of the best, quote unquote, indie perfumers, right up there with Liz Moore's of Papillon, as far as I'm concerned. Um... This is green, fresh, and that air accord and granite literally reminded me of just like climbing the Alps, uh, like literally the air hanging over the, the Alps. Um, some people compared it to Reflection Man, which I already own, but uh, maybe a small part of the fragrance, but uh, they go in two different directions, in my opinion, two different directions. Reflection Man really focuses much more heavily on the Jasmine, uh, whereas... I really feel like the tower fragrance doesn't go so floral. You know, it kind of goes in that, um, it, it goes, it, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin, you know, and it gives you that idea of being over the Swiss Alps and that airiness and the lightness. And I just really enjoyed it. I would, I would have a bottle of that. Honestly, if money was no issue, I would have a bottle of that. So that's uh, La Air de, de Alpes Suisses at number 16. Number 15 is a Frederick Mall, and it is one of the most underrated Frederick Malls, in my opinion. This is Rose and Quia. So Rose and Leather. Jean-Claude Elena uh, was famous for saying that a good perfumer should be able to be a little bit like a magician and that uh, he should be able to make you smell even what isn't there. Rose and Queer is a great case study in that. I think this is a fragrance with no rose and no queer. Uh, I think the rose is geranium, and I and I don't think there is any real... Well, I guess there is no real leather anyway, but um, I think there's like maybe an isobutyl quinoline note in the base, so maybe there is technically a queer, but um, uh, this is one of my favorite executions of geranium. Like, uh, if you want to really study geranium, this and... Um, Hermes has a flanker of equipage, equipage geranium, and they're both Jean-Claude Elena's. And he really, I think, was onto something with this geranium accord. It's so good, and I love wearing it, too. That's the thing. There's something so professional about it, and I've come to really enjoy his style, that airy, excuse me, that fresh, airy style. Some people have said, like, painting with watercolors. There's definitely that feeling. Uh, big fan of Rose and Queer at number uh, 15. Number 14 is Serge Luton's comeback. Literally Serge Luton's return to form. This is called La Couche du Diable. La Couche du Diable. Um, absolutely, positively fantastic fragrance. Um, one of my favorite 
Uh, I had a 10 mil decant and I believe my Surge Benefactor who, if you go back a year or so, maybe 18 months, I forget how far, but there's a Serge Luton live stream on my channel where I unboxed all of these Serge Luton fragrances he sent to me for free. Uh, very, very kind of him. And um, so La Couche du Diable is basically to what I would say Serge's return to form. 2018, they had La Participe Passe, I believe. That was, I believe, their proper comeback. And this was the continuation of that. Resinous, spicy, uh, cystus labdanum, and oud. And... Um, you know, if you're used to that heavy, dark Surge DNA, this is the return to form. And uh, I hate these new bottles, though. I must admit, I do hate them. But I really like the vintage bottles. But the, the this is the only um, bottle that came in because it came out in 2019 when they already switched to the to the new bottles. But uh, very resinous, spicy, smoky. Uh, the uh, imp, the um, labdanum, the cystus labdanum here just feels exactly like it should feel. It feels so thick and resinous and leathery and sticky like you put your hands together and it's almost like a Chinese trap like you can't open them you know because your muscles aren't strong enough it's like putting a band around an alligator's mouth right the alligator can't open them because the all the muscles are used for clamping not opening uh there's just this like stickiness like your fingers are glued together you know about the the cystus that's the way I like my labdanum it's so good huge 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 fan of um La Couche du Diable. Fantastic stuff. Okay, next on the list, we have uh, number 13, and it is a Papillon. And Papillon has a new fragrance coming out, and I cannot wait. I cannot wait to smell it. Uh, and But this one is called Bengal Rouge. Bengal Rouge is absolutely fantastic. The uh, story behind it, everything about it. If you go watch my live stream with Liz Moores, you know what? It may have been backstage, but I remember her, um, the cat that she owns that uh, I want to say the cat's name was Mimi, if I remember correctly. But uh, the cat she owns apparently is like the inspiration for this. So Liz Moores would wear Shalimar and then pet her cat. And, you know, it would be this musky feline, you know, like feeling. And, and that is what inspired Bengal Rouge, this resinous, spicy take on Shalimar. The problem is, is to me, Shalimar is one of the greatest fragrances of all time. Um... And I already own Le Leon, which some people compare to Shalimar. So if I, you know, but for, again, I think every single fragrance in the Papillon lineup is full bottle worthy. Every single one. I've reviewed all of them except for the two I have full bottles of. So there is a review of Papillon's Bengal Rouge. Uh, I love it. You know, like I said, I would totally wear this. It's, uh, if you like Shalimar, this is a must sniff. You know, if you don't mind having something that really has that Shalimar DNA, it's fantastic. The only downside is it's very much like Shalimar. Uh, I think maybe Bengal Rouge has a little bit more honey, right? A little bit more honey, uh, and maybe a little bit more of that Turkish rose, but I, I was a huge, huge fan because I love that DNA and I love Shalimar. So uh, Bengal Rouge at uh, number 13. Number 12, we are at Bortnikov. We're in the artisanal range already. And uh, number 12 is uh, Bortnikov's Amber Cologne, probably one of my favorite uh, cologne style fragrances. I've recently reviewed this within the last couple months on, on the channel. This is the vintage um, wood cap, so be careful. I don't know what the new ones are like. Some people say they've lost a lot of the tenacity. You know, this was never a huge fragrance anyways because it kind of highlighted that ambergris accord. Um, lots of, when they say amber, they're, they're referring to gray amber, ambergris. Uh, and so you have ambergris and you have brown ambergris in here. And so I think it's just one of the most classy colognes. I like to wear this like to classy events, Father's Day, birthday, stuff like that. Definitely a spring and summer fragrance for me. It's got orange bergamot, pink grapefruit, frangipani, um, cardamom. The orange is sweet orange, by the way. Jasmine Sambach, Virginia cedar, wood, sandalwood, gray and brown ambergris, oud from Sri Lanka by Bortnikoff. Uh, and uh, an Indonesian oud called Boya oud and vanilla. So very interesting stuff. Very, very interesting. Uh, and go check out my review if you want to learn more. So Amber Cologne at number uh, 12. Number 11 is a, a Rige. I don't have the sample anymore because I, I literally drained it just doing the review. It was only like one drop and enough for me to do the review. I would love a bottle, but... Um, 
one of the best frangipani fragrances I've ever smelled. It's called Plumeria de Oris. And Plumeria de Oris um, is this animalic floral fragrance. It was supposed to be named after Russian Adam's wife. And when Russian Adam started adding civet and stuff like that to it, she was like, you can't put my name on this. Uh, so he named it Plumeria de Oris. But I remember that creamy apricot with the Oris and the frangipani. Frangipani always gives this tropical... Plumeria is another name for frangipani, by the way. Uh, so Plumeria or frangipani are kind of the same thing. Uh, but um, it's got this tropical feel. Like when you go on bake one of those... You ever been to like a five-star resort and they've got like the you know, Hawaiian women lined up waiting for you to get out of the SUV. You get out and they put that wreath over your head. It's like a lei or whatever. They call them like leis. And every island and, and tribe has its own version of it and its own, you know, dance and all that stuff. But that is made out of frangipanis normally. And it always gives me that tropical vibe. Uh, and here it's mixed with myrrh, sandalwood, civet. It's just fantastic. Just a brilliant... It leans traditionally feminine, but it's so beautiful, and it highlights uh, Plumeria so nice. It's such a nice highlight of Plumeria. So um, Plumeria de Oris, love a bottle, never have one probably, but uh, yes, Plumeria de Oris comes in at number 11. Number 10 is an Amouage, and it is Portrayal Man. Now, Portrayal Man, I have a full review on the channel. I love this stuff. Look at the dent I put in that bottle. Um, some people don't realize how much fragrance you have to wear when you have all of this to put a dent like this in that bottle. Uh, they're like, that's not a big dent. Bullshit. It is a huge dent for my collection. Uh, and so Portrayal Man, one of my all-time favorites, very floral, woody, violet leaf, Java, Javanese vetiver, and Cade oil, or Cade juniper, as they call it. Pierre Negrin, who's one of my favorite perfumers, made it. Uh, obviously, if you like vintage fragrances like Fahrenheit, it always gets compared to Fahrenheit. But if you want to see more of an in-depth review, go check out my review on it. Um, love Portrayal. And for me, probably one of the most beautiful bottles ever. Uh, I think this is so classy. This is towards the end of Christopher Chong's era. And I remember when I first got it, I was mad. I was like, this is not an M watch. What the hell is this? Um, and as you can see, as I wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it, I ended up falling more and more in love with it. So Portrayal Man uh, comes in at number 10, top 10. Number... Nine. Uh, number nine is back to Bortnikov. This is Musk Khabib. Musk Khabib. So I very recently talked about the Aris Ladore collection, which um, uh, is right here. And in one of them, it was called... Um, it was called... Uh... It was called Paradise Soil, okay? So Paradise Soil, interestingly enough, had this um, vintage deer musk and cacao, and it was very floral. One of the most beautiful jasmine fragrances I've ever smelled, right? I think it's for sale very, very soon on the Arige website. Um, and there was very, it was something about that combination of musks and florals, which really, really reminded me of musk habib. So whenever people think about sort of florals in the artisanal space, it's always Dmitry Bortnikov, which comes to mind. And these last couple, Plumeria de Oris, and this one, which is going to be on sale very soon, if not already, um, uh, those two show Russian Adam can also do this type of work. But really, Bortnikov is known for it. So Muscabib in the vintage, um, you know, wood cap. I mean, it's so just chocolatey it's like chocolatey powdery floral musk and and uh the the floral in here is ylang ylang so it's like this big yellow floral with real siberian deer musk underneath if you've never smelled real deer musk it does something like it just shoots to the top of your brain uh in a way that uh is just slightly animalic slightly pissy but also uh as the sort of hashtag here says very cozy there's really something to that um and, and musk habib is, uh, is a great example of that. I like my musks traditionally more animalic, but that is very well done. Uh, one of my favorite musk fragrances. I've come to really love musk habib at number nine. Number eight is a Frederick Mall. This is the moon. I love Julianne Raskinet's work. I love the moon. I had a 10 mil decant before, so don't judge the uh, wear here just by this bottle. I had a 10 mil decant, ran through the whole damn thing. 
um, the moon is, it is just fantastic. I mean, uh, it is expensive, uh, for what it is. It's, um, got that raspberry, lychee, lychee combination with red currant and saffron, uh, and frankincense, Turkish rose, oud, and leather, and it definitely gives off this, um, it definitely gives off this sort of, like, uh, hookah vibe, if you've ever smoked, um, or they say in Arabic, algide, I guess, but this hookah-like, uh, feel with this, if you've ever had, like, flavored tobacco, that uh, molasses tobacco that they put in the hookah with the coals on top. And it definitely gives me a little bit of that vibe. But very oriental. Huge fragrance. Huge. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love this style of fragrances. I can't get enough of them. So the moon at number eight. Number seven. We are back to our good friend Dmitry Bortnikov. And this is Oud Monarch from 2019. Of course, they're all from 2019. This is the wood cap version. Um, Oud Monarch is a chocolate oud, but... It's more than that because it also has this um, sort of frangipani and magnolia opening, which Bortnikov is known for with some tobacco rose, cinnamon, may rose, uh, and a little bit of civet in the base, labdanum, castorium, just um, vanilla, but it's really known as a chocolatey oud. And it is a chocolatey oud, but done in the Bortnikov style. Go watch my uh, review, my full review on the channel of Oud Monarch if you want to learn more. So that is Oud Monarch at number seven. Number six is uh, back to Amouage. We have Overture Man, one of my all-time favorite boozy fragrances, if you will. I don't know if you can see, but it's supposed to look like the um, curtains are almost coming down. It changes a little bit. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful packaging. And um, there we have it. Look at that, Overture Man. And again, look at the dent. You know, that's a hell of a dent for my collection. Oh God, it is so, so good. I love the interplay of grapefruit, but not the boring designer grapefruit. Um, the, uh, the real grapefruit, uh, well, I say real, but um, realistic grapefruit. Tangy, tart, bitter, you know, like it needs some sugar, like it, um, like it makes your mouth just want to pucker up, you know? with animalic notes and one of the most beautiful cognac notes I've ever smelled. Just absolutely brilliant. Uh, go check out my full review of Overture Man if you're interested in learning more. That's number six. Number five is now we have top five. They're all Areges, okay? So like I was talking about earlier, this is my personal taste. Don't be offended by it. It's just my opinion. I think these are the best fragrances from 2019 for me, for what I want to wear and, and where I'm at in my journey right now. This is just where I'm at. So number five is Siberian Summer. Um, Siberian Summer, whoops, how about we put it the right way, Ramsey? Siberian Summer is one of the most, um, underrated fragrances, in, in my opinion, for musk. This is a, a fragrance that doesn't use real deer musk, and yet, he was able to create, it uses a, um, synthetic musks, but he was able to create a musk fragrance that, to me, just recreates the smell of real musk like I've hardly ever, ever smelled. It is, um, it's fantastic. It's a uh, animalic green. It uses birch tar and camphor notes with some lime and bergamot. It definitely will remind you of Russian musk. If you've ever smelled Russian musk, it sits in that Russian musk territory, but there are different floral notes in here like champaka flower and, and stuff like that, which is a little bit different than what you get in Russian musk. There's a Siberian stone pine note. Just imagine lots of green foresty notes, animalic green with that muskiness and oak moss. And um, my God, man, I love Siberian summer. I am, I am, uh, I mean, I would love another bottle of this. And I, I didn't run through all this by myself. I bought a partial because that's all I could get. Sometimes you got to get what you can get. But uh, man, Siberian summer is so, so good. Um, it is an extra uh, Russian cedar resins. Yes, I agree with that. Beautiful stuff. Um, beautiful stuff by Arisia. Number five. Number four. Number four is um, a little bit of a cheat because obviously the original came out a year or, or so before this. Um, actually, I think a couple years before this. But uh, this is Ottoman Empire Part 2. So you can see the part two right there. So this is a juice from the second version. I've tried them all. I wouldn't mind having any of them. You know, someone was trying to say the um, 
someone was trying to say that the um, fourth version is different. It's not good. Bullshit. I think they're all amazing. Any version of Ottoman Empire I've tried are all amazing. Um, and so this is one of my favorite rose ouds. Not my favorite, because my favorite is Malik, I'll tell you. But one of my favorite rose ouds. Very spicy, floral. There's so much... Um, there's so much going on in Ottoman Empire, um, and from what, uh, from what Arij described it as, he never changed the, um, he never changed the formula of, of Ottoman Empire. So whether it was part one, part two, part three, part four, they are all the same from my understanding. Uh, and so you get things like uh, rose, Bulgarian rose, rose oil, white rose, frangipani, jasmine, cardamom, pepper, Indian oud, more frangipani, oud, saffron, cinnamon, nutmeg, vetiver, amber, sandalwood, myrrh, and oak moss. And um, uh, it is a continuation of Ottoman Empire. One of the most sought after perfumes by Arij, the essence of mysteries with a heart of extravagant richness, a character of unmatchable diversity the blissful sensation of narcotic depth and a soul healing impact. I agree with all that. And it is a huge fragrance. So one of my favorite rose oods, hands down. Um, I love Ottoman Empire. And number four, number three, number three is Siberian Musk Part Two. Siberian Musk Part Two, one of my all time favorite musks. I, I, um, and you can kind of see the part two right there, but this is, this is juice from the second Siberian Musk. I have juice from the first Siberian Musk. I've reviewed both of these on the channel. Um, and honestly, I would take a bottle of any, even the third one that they did. I don't care. Uh, one, two, three, doesn't matter to me. I would take a bottle of any of them. They're all amazing to me. Um, Siberian Musk is one of my all-time favorite musk fragrances. It highlights the musk note exactly how I would uh, expect it to be uh, highlighted. It gives off that pissy uh, character. You know, it's 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 like you're not just looking at the deer, you're looking at the whole atmosphere the deer is in. You get the bark, it rubs itself on. You know, you get the grass it's feeding on. Um, all You know, all of these aspects, it's highlighted here. With things like Siberian stone pine, blue cypress, galbanum, sandalwood, and a little bit of oud. I love Siberian uh, musk. So go check out my review on the channel on both of those. So, we're down to the top two. So, what do you think they are? Well, um, I told you before, I am apt to switch up my uh, rankings. And I just did a top 77 artisanal ranking. but I, And I think I had this higher than number one. But we're switching it up. My, my feelings change. They, they'll probably change tomorrow as well. But you get the idea. Number two is Antiquity. Antiquity is um, absolutely brilliant. And there's a little bit of Antiquity in Royal Barn as well. So... If you like antiquity, Royal Barn should be your um, Royal Barn should be your target. So I am in love with this fragrance. I think, my God, man, it is. Oh fuck! So I described it on my review as like being in a train, going back in time and watching Amy Guerlain, Jacques Guerlain, Jean Paul Guerlain, you know, uh, Francois Coty, and all of these historically impactful perfumers. There's peach aldehydes and bergamot with Cambodian oud, patchouli, carnation, and angelica root with patchouli, Russian leather, amber, muscatone, and Indian oak moss. And so it's literally like, imagine if Guerlain made a fragrance with a Rige La Dore style oud. That's literally what this is to me. And antiquity is just, I mean, it's, it's a masterpiece. I think it's a masterpiece. It's leathery. I love leathers. It's animalic. You get the Cambodian oud. It's smoky. It's spicy. But you also get that aldehydic, old school, vintage, oak, you know, opening. Um, you know, it's, it's to me, this is a Guerlain using Oud, which is exactly the um, sort of, um, it, it, it's exactly what the uh, brand is, is shooting for. You know, that's what the brand wants. That, that is the official statement of the brand. So Antiquity is, is brilliant. I've got a review. Go, go watch it. I, I love antiquity. And that leaves number one. And number one is War and Peace. And War and Peace, number one right now, you know, I'm so happy to have this bottle. I love War and Peace. There's definitely some War and Peace in Quirtus, the new one from Arige for 24. There's definitely a little bit of the DNA up here in Quirtus. 
Imagine Quirtus is like if you took War and Peace and blended it with his um, Russian leather, okay? His his Queer de Russie. Um, and, and War and Peace uh, sort of settles around a couple main notes. So um, one of those main notes is patchouli. One of them is castorium. Um, and one of them is... Uh, Civet. So civet, patchouli, castorium, and orris root. Orris root is the other one. Uh, and there's a beautiful taif rose in here. I love taif rose. It's my favorite type of rose. It's got that sort of lemony tea-like freshness with, of course, real ambergris, amber oils, natural musks. There's real musk in here and oak moss and vetiver. It's dark. It's animalic. It's leathery. They say it's mesmerizing. Real Siberian deer musk, ambergris, castorium. And that gives you an idea of Quirtus as well. Quirtus is kind of based off of this DNA, I think. And uh, it says a juxtaposition of black and white, life and death. And through it all, we discover in this calmly aggressive composition a harmonious balance. This olfactory poem, War and Peace, will satisfy even the most adventurous fragrance lover. Yes to that. So that's my um, top 37 from the year 2019. Let me know what your favorites are. I know we went through a lot today in an hour and a half. I love doing these videos for you guys. Sometimes they've been hard. Life is just crazy for me right now, but uh, I'll always make time for everyone on Channel Ram. I love doing the videos. Thank you for the support to everyone who watches and comments and subscribed and all that stuff. I love the back and forth, the banter. Do leave a, a comment, leave a message. Let me know you've watched or are watching. Let me know what your favorites are. And uh, we'll be back soon with more videos. Cheers, guys. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.